In this video, I'm going to connect all these wires from all these different batteries to bus bars. This is part of the continuing series that I'm doing on building a DIY power wall, but instead of Tesla batteries, I'm using Chevy Volt batteries. And these will be connected to solar panels and make an off-grid system so I can run things even if the grid goes down. They look like three separate kind of groups. Uh, I've got them wired as eight separate batteries with a nominal 44 volts each. So I got a couple of options on how I can connect all these wires uh, to a bus bar. So let's look at some of the options. So I need a bus bar that can handle at least 250 amps. Here are two common options that I've seen online. Is one to use some aluminum stock and the other to take copper pipe and uh, pound it flat. Now I have a lot of both of these uh, scraps. The copper pipe, I have scraps from when I did my solar hydronic system for the garage and for the house. So I got a bunch of these kind of short little pieces, uh, a bunch of this aluminum angle, and this stuff's pretty thick. So if you look at the cross section between the two, I mean, there's, it, it's pretty clear that the aluminum is a lot thicker than the copper. Uh, so I would think that this can handle a lot more amperage than the copper, but copper has uh, more conductivity and I don't have to worry about corrosion. So I kind of got a little bit of a dilemma, but both of these materials I have on hand and I don't have to spend any money to get them. Hey, if you guys watching this video have some experience with these two uh, topics, uh, please chime in and let me know what you think. But you see, it's not incredibly thick. Now this started out as three quarter inch copper. So we got one and three eighths wide. You know, it's, it's not even an eighth of an inch thick. So my guess is that this can't handle a lot of amperage, but I don't know. I mean, you guys tell me. If I compare that to this guy, I mean, I would think that this thick aluminum can do better than this piece of copper. But I mean, maybe I should stack up a two or three pieces of copper uh, pounded flat like this. So, you know, please weigh in. Let me know what you think. Uh, it's two by two. It's a full quarter inch thick. So this is my dilemma about which one to use. I also kind of like that this is in an angle because uh, that will allow me to get my uh, wrenches on the sides. So if this is uh, bolted down and I'm trying to put a bolt through a hole, I can get a wrench on each side for that uh, bolt head and the nut. Uh, and that's harder if it's just laying flat. Uh, so you got to get a standoff and then you have to get in underneath it. I'm going to try it out of the aluminum and if you guys uh, chime in and tell me that, you know, I'm doing something completely off here, uh, I'm going to take it seriously. So let me know your thoughts. See how we need to stagger these. That about looks good. So right now we're talking about seven inches. And then I need a couple more uh, bolt holes down at the end for the charge controller and inverter. All right, we got our two pieces. if I can get a power tool on this. Okay, this is before and after. Uh, I used a belt sander. These brackets uh, were used to support some solar panels on a roof and they're at least 30 years old. So I got the bus bar super clean on both sides and then I sprayed them down with this uh, battery protector, uh, anti-corrosion stuff. And I actually went to the electric supply house and I asked them for a uh, NOAX, uh, but in describing the project, they actually suggested I use this instead of NOAX. So that's what I'm using. Chunk of rubber mat, I think it was for horse stalls. 
I'm going to be able to put two bolts in here and this will insulate it from the wood. There's one piece and two pieces. So these are stainless steel bolts and I had these uh, from when I took apart a solar panel from a roof. So I have the bolts coming up through with some large washers on the back side. And I'm going to take this bus bar, place it on here. I'm trying not to touch the shiny purple part. <laughs> there we go, tighten that up. So now I got those uh, bolt heads are actually recessed a little bit. As far as where to mount this, I think I want this space for the solar charge controller. Then I'll have the bus bar and then the inverter can go over here. So as you can see those bolt heads uh, won't touch the plywood because I have another layer of rubber underneath. Now these are three inch long cabinet screws. Alright, as a divider I just grabbed a 2x4 and it protrudes well beyond the face of the two bus bars. Alright, in order to go through the three and a half inch wide board and through the rubber and then into the plywood, I need five and a half inches. I have some five inch long screws. Then to countersink them, I have some Fostner bits. Here, so now those are countersunk. And eventually I would like to paint this white uh, so that it matches everything, but we'll get it in place for now. Any metal tool can't short out from one side to the other. That is good. And my understanding is that in order to draw from each battery equally, so that they all go down and up equally, I want the uh, wire that runs to them to all be equal lengths. By the way, if you're an electrical engineer, I would love it if you could weigh in on this and tell me if I'm, you know, just overthinking it or whatever. Uh, I'm going to start by cutting some wire off this group cell. So this one here is 28 inches and this one is 20 inches. So I've got four feet worth of wire here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut four feet off of um, the two wires. That way I've included this length of copper. So here's the rough in of where I'm going to route all the wires uh, so that they all come down through this central opening. What I've got here is the shortest uh, lead out of all of them. So if I take one foot off this, which is the shortest, and take one foot off all of them, I'm keeping them equal. I marked out uh, where one foot is just to make it easier and I'm gonna cut this down at the one foot mark turns out the M6 by 12 bolts that I have uh, they get through it but there's not a lot of extra meat I'm gonna go get some longer bolt picked up some 20 millimeter length bolts I'm gonna use those instead Anybody keeping score back at home, uh, the grand total is now up to $2,097. Hey Eleanor, I'm looking for my magnetic tray to hold the parts. Eh. I'm just joking, they're stainless steel so they don't, <laughs> they're not magnetic anyways. <laughs> the 20 millimeter going through, uh, because the end of the bolt sticked out so much, I didn't want it sticking out the other side, so I switched the wire to the other side. I polished both, uh, so both should be nice and conductive. Well, we have all the negatives hooked up. So next comes hooking up the positive wire to the bus bar. But I don't want to hook it up directly like I did with the negatives. Instead, I want to put a fuse holder in line. Uh, that way, every individual battery is protected with a fuse. Well, that didn't hold, did it? My cheap variety pack of terminals, uh, the splices weren't working and it just pulled right off. Uh, and I noticed that this had thin metal on the inside and it looked like a larger diameter. That variety pack I've had for a while and I just grabbed little pieces out of it. So I went out to the store and 
got these. Come on. There we go. Uh, they're Dorman. Yep. Yeah, so those are holding much better. Great. But I went ahead and put the splices on and the ring terminals on all eight of these uh, fuse holders. With a through bolt, I can really sink this down as opposed to if I had threaded the aluminum, I would have had to be real ginger with it. We have all the fuse holders in place and screwed on nice and tight. Now this is the shortest positive lead and as I can see, I got plenty of extra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it over to what the shortest length is, measure and cut every lead uh, that same amount so that all the leads are as short as possible but still the exact same length. There's the first one connected up. All right, there we go. And I've been pulling on each one, they're all tight. Uh, now we can group these wires together. So I want to make sure that these are kind of as neat and tidy as possible. In some spots where the wire is rubbing against the angle, it's not exactly a sharp edge, but I want to give it a little bit more protection. So I'm going to use some of this stuff. It's a flashing tape. It's kind of a thick rubbery material and I'm just going to cut it and tape it in place. Uh, I've picked up this pack of 30 amp blade type fuses. I'm going to put them in the fuse holders. That'll uh, mean that every battery maxes out at just a uh, 30 amp draw. And I know that a lot of you guys were concerned that I was using too thin a gauge of wire. Now this is 10 gauge, and my understanding is that 10 gauge maxes out at 30 amps, which is why I picked up 30 amp fuses. Now I actually have eight separate batteries up here. There's 12 cell groups in each. Uh, that means that the eight times 30, I could draw a maximum of 240 amps and add a nominal 44 volts, that could give me 10.5 kilowatts. As of right now, there's zero voltage between the two sides. Um, let's, uh, let's check in right there, we've got 44.2, and I'm also checking to make sure that there's no negative symbol on the screen, which would mean that I have the polarity off. Uh, and I've already double checked that when I put all the wires on and color coded them yellow and black, but uh, nothing wrong with double checking, right? Uh, given that all of these had the same voltage, 44.2, and I didn't see any polarities wrong, uh, let's start putting some fuses in. All right, let's put these 30 amp fuses in the fuse holders. And that's going to power up these bus bars. By the way, if anybody's interested why I'm doing all individual fuses instead of one fuse block, which would have made this a lot neater and tidier, I wanted to. I looked into them. Uh, I could not find one that was rated to go up to, say, 60 volts with a thick enough bus bar built in. They, they were all meant for like uh, 100 amps or 150 amps. Uh, this way, I'm going to get 240 amps out of this setup. All the fuses are in. Nothing blew up. <laughs> Excellent. We got 44.2 volts right here at the bus bar. That's awesome. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this series, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for me, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Now, eventually, I'd love to get some powerful inverters. Uh, but these big inverters are also big money. I'm probably going to start with some smaller equipment that's less expensive so that I can start putting the batteries to use. Uh, if you guys have suggestions for me, uh, right now I'm leaning towards the Magnum 4448 inverter, uh, but let me know uh, what your thoughts are. All right, thanks.